Greetings from Geneva. I'm Xiang Chenzhang, Deputy Director General of the World Trade Organization. On behalf of the WTO Director General, Dr. Ngozi, who is unable to join you, I'm very pleased to represent her in this forum that discuss how Pacific economic resilience and competitiveness can be enhanced post COVID-19. Prior to the COVID-19 pandemic, we saw many challenges. The rules-based trading system was being questioned. Protectionism was dampening global trade flows. There were rising geopolitical tensions, all of the combined with the threat of climate change. The COVID-19 pandemic represents an unprecedented disruption to the global economy and world trade as production and the consumption are sailed back across the globe. As you are aware, the WTO has been actively working on trade and public health related issues since 2001, when members adopt the Doha Declaration on Trips and the Public Health. Over this time, the WTO has promoted a holistic and the multidisciplinary approach, leading to invaluable partnerships with the sister international organizations. Trade has been a positive force during the pandemic by enabling access to much needed medical supplies around the world. Even as the value of global merchandise trade shrank by more than 8% in 2020, Trading medical supplies increased by 16% and by 50% for personal protective equipment. Trade is a tool that can be leveraged to facilitate access. Members have acknowledged this and have made several proposals related to trade and public health aimed at facilitating trade and access to medical goods. We are actually conscious that the policymakers across the globe are wrestling with processing protocol issues as they seek to map their way through the pandemic. And we are working with a wide range of partners to play our role in creating a sound, inclusive, and timely information base to support critical policy choices. Recently, the WTO, in collaboration with World Bank, MIF, and World Health Organization, have formed a task force as a war room to help track, coordinate, and advance the deliveries of COVID-19 health tools to developing countries, and to mobilize relevant stakeholders and the national leaders to remove critical roadblocks in support of priorities set out by the institutions. Apart from these efforts to address the impact of COVID-19, a research piece was conducted by the WTO Secretariat regarding six disaster-affected countries, Dominique, Fiji, Nepal, St. Lucia, Tonga, and Vanuatu. This research found that the damage caused by natural disasters as a percentage of GDP can be very high for small economies, given their small size. As follow-up, the WTO members are discussing further with a view to establish how the WTO can contribute to recovery and enhance resilience in small economies, as well as in the areas where small economies could benefit from international cooperation in order to adopt climate change mitigation measures. Let me now turn to what is happening on the negotiations fund and the preparations for the MC12 in a few areas that I think might be of interest to you. On fisheries subsidy negotiations, the Ministerial TNC on fisheries subsidy is the first of its kind for the WTO. After 20 years of the negotiation, 
we had to explore other ways to allow members to bridge the remaining gaps that stand in the way of achieving an agreement on these crucial topics. As Director General has stated, 20 years is far too long for something that is able delivering for people and the planet. I'm pleased to note that a number of you have made or will be making interventions during this historical ministerial TNC. With this agreement, we have the opportunity to deliver on the major sustainable development goal, that of putting an end to subsidies that contribute to overcapacity and overfishing as well as illegal, unregulated and unreported fishing. This is a goal that all countries have agreed to and where a strong and a clear mandate has been given to the WTO. At a time when the pandemic is setting us back in the achievement of other parts of the SDG agenda, an agreement on fishery subsidies is a critical test for trade ministers and for the credibility of our organization. Most importantly, this agreement is vital for our fish stocks, for the livelihood of our fishers and our fishers communities, and for our future generations. The open, frank, and the productive discussions have demonstrated a common will from members to reach a meaningful agreement that takes into account the interests of all members. These negotiations can only conclude with an agreement by consensus. On that spirit, we expect that members will be able to find common ground on the few remaining differences and the reach agreement at the 12th Ministerial Conference in December. On agriculture, domestic support remains the priority for most members and the cornerstone of a possible agriculture outcome. Negotiations revolve around identification of a meaningful, albeit realistic way forward to address trade distorting domestic support in the post-MC12 negotiations. The question of public stockholding for food security purpose also constitutes an essential topic in the negotiations. Other topics include export restrictions, including a possible decision on exemption of food purchases by the World Food Program from such matters, market access, export competition, cotton, and a special safeguard mechanism. Many members have stressed the need to develop a package that would consist to a meaningful response to food security challenges, including in view of COVID-19 crisis, a meeting will be held on 19 July to give members an opportunity to introduce new submissions. The objective remains to be in a position to circulate a first draft text for a possible outcome at MC12 at some stage before the summer recess. On trade and development, proposals to strengthen some of the existing special and differential treatment provisions have been on the table for a good many years. They have had a checked history, with only some LDC-specific proposals being agreed to at the Hong Kong Ministerial Conference in 2005. The proposals have taken slightly different iterations over time, with the 10 that are currently on the table being sponsored and pushed by the G90. These 10 proposals have been discussed in the past and the divergence views have been expressed by members on them. Broadly speaking, the G90 are seeking certain flexibilities for developing countries and ILDCs, for example, through longer implementation periods, exemptions from certain provisions, and technical and financial assistance in order to allow the achievement of the development objectives. While some members 
are of the view that the proposals from a good basis form a good basis for further discussion. Other members continue to recall that they have already previously shared their concerns on these proposals, which they cannot accept in their current form. Obviously, further progress is in the hands of members who have to find a way forward unless there is a real engagement on the substance by all members. It may not be possible to make the required progress in the coming weeks and months in order to have a concrete outcome on the 10G90 proposal at MC12. Last but not least, I now tend to cooperation between the WTO and the PAFs, WTO and the PAFs signed their first MOU in 2000. This has been renewed over the years with the most recent one due to expire on 22 May 2022. The achievement of sustainable economic growth in the post-COVID-19 world will require a holistic approach from all global players. In this context, the WTO reiterates its importance of the collaboration between PAFs and the WTO. With six foreign island countries being members of the WTO and as such are TA beneficiaries, the Secretariat remains committed to providing technical assistance based on needs and the priorities that these countries have identified. Allow me to share a few details on the assistance provided to these countries since 2018 to date, June 2021. About 590 participants have been registered in WTO TA activities, of which 350 have participated in online courses. In addition, the WTO has been supporting PAF's office in Geneva with interns, official from one of the PAFs, for the last five years. We value the collaboration with the PAFs and the WTO Secretariat will reach out to the PAF's office in Geneva with a view to prepare for the renewal of the MOU between the WTO Secretariat and the PAFs. We look forward to continuing our strong collaboration with your organization as we move forward in our work. Thank you.